Emotion. These are the ingredients that go into game day at Rutgers University. Hard work, excitement, achievement. These are the characteristics of Rutgers football, a program that has set its sights on a new level of excellence. Pride, devotion, leadership. These are the qualities that are needed to compete on this team. A team dedicated to being the best that they can be. A team reaching for the top. Six Rutgers football season kicked off in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts against the Eagles of Boston College. This game would set the stage for the upcoming Scarlet Knight season. The script called for a powerful, determined defense that on this day would not allow the Eagles to get off the ground. And it introduced a patient ball control Rutgers offense that gained yardage the old-fashioned way. They earned it. An 80-yard, 13-play drive, starring junior Matt Prescott in his offensive line, led the Knights to their first score of the year. Joe Gagliardi rolled right and hit Henry Henderson in the end zone for the six points. The old water bucket play left Boston College holding the pail while Curtis Stevens spilled into the end zone, and Rutgers found itself up eight to nothing at the intermission. In the second act, it was Gagliardi and running backs Curtis Stevens and Henry Henderson leading the performance. Together, they produced an 85-yard march downfield that was capped by a Doug Geisler field goal, the first of his collegiate career. On the other side of the ball, the Scarlet defense was putting on the hits. Led by senior linebackers Tyrone Stowe and Matt Bachman, they held All-American Troy Stratford and the entire Boston College offense to a total of one yard rushing in the first half. We felt that our defense this year was exceptional. We didn't quite think it would be as good as it turned out to be uh, during the year. Our defensive line really did a nice job in controlling the line of scrimmage. Uh, the secondary, we thought, did a nice job with coverage. Uh, Coach Floyd, I thought, did a nice job in mixing up our coverages back there and teaching the kids what we had to get done. Uh, the linebackers, I thought, did uh, an exceptional job, led by Tyrone Stowe and Matt Bachman. This intimidating pair of linebackers led the Scarlet Knights to their first win ever in Alumni Stadium. Homecoming at Rutgers Stadium found fans, alumni, and students toasting to a scarlet victory over the Bearcats of Cincinnati. The fans weren't the only ones pumped up, though, as the Rutgers offense exploded onto the playing field. Joe Gagliardi completed 21 passes for 313 yards, leading the Knights to a total of seven touchdowns. Contest saw the emergence of tight end Bruce Campbell as a bright spot in Rutgers' future. 
He went on to lead all Rutgers receivers with 30 receptions on the year. And it introduced sophomore flanker Brian Cobb as one of the most exciting players of the 1986 season. Against the Bearcats, Cobb would catch eight passes, score three touchdowns, and electrify the homecoming crowd with an 88-yard kickoff return. I can remember calling for Eric Young to get the ball because it was kicked to his side. But it took a little bounce back to my side and right up into my arms. Everyone made a great effort as far as blocking up front. And we had Roland Banks and Nick Erda make two exceptional blocks which sprung me free on the left side. From there on, it was just all running down the sideline to get to the touchdown. In all, Rutgers tallied 48 points against Cincinnati, the most points scored by a Scarlet squad since 1979. In 1869, 50 young men from two schools gathered together on the Rutgers campus to play a game called football. It was the start of a tradition of athletic excellence at Rutgers that has earned nearly 500 victories since that day. 100 years earlier, in 1766, Rutgers College was founded as one of the original colonial colleges. It was the start of an academic tradition that would grow to become the State University of New Jersey. Rutgers has a great academic tradition. And we also stress the fact that academic and ethics go hand in hand here and can help and can work with each other. We demand a lot of our students in relationship to the time in the classroom. And we also have great expectations of them out of the academic area and on the athletic field. Today, Rutgers is an academic community 40,000 strong a leader in such fields as business, law, and management. It is also a front-runner in such high-tech areas as computer science and engineering. It is a university built on the foundation of five smaller colleges, and so combines the advantages of a larger institution with the friendliness of a small-town school. Small class sizes and a faculty that truly cares help make the student feel at home here. Academic facilities and programs are in place to help meet the special needs of the Rutgers student-athlete. Well, your freshman year is a mandatory study hall, and that really helps. Uh, when you first come in, you may, you may feel a little bit apprehensive about it. When you look down the road, it really helps. There's tutors available whenever you need them, whatever subject, and that helps because there's times when things just may not understand what the professor's saying, and you can't get to see them in their office hours. You just talk to um, Mr. Barrows, he assigns a tutor to you, you go to him or her, and you understand what's going on. It's really a quality system. My role within the football program is to work closely with our football players as an academic counselor to make sure that they uh, reach their potential. And then in general, I'm also there as somebody to talk to, somebody outside of the coaching staff, somebody uh, kids can refer to if they have any academic problems or personal problems, whatever. I like to say that uh, we expect at least 200% from our players. We expect 100% on the football field, and we expect 100% in the classroom. It would take such a 200% effort to overcome the explosive Syracuse Orange men inside the unfriendly confines of the Carrier Dome. In fact, Syracuse did get off to a fast start, and the Orange scored a quick three points the first point scored on the Rutgers defense in the opening period this year. Joe Gagliardi brought the Scarlet Knights back by deftly mixing up the ground game with a slick underneath passing attack. Completing 11 of 16 passes, Gagliardi called on running back Dan Lipset and was able to put together two drives which ended in field goals. But as the teams headed for their locker rooms, Rutgers was down 10 to 6. Well, 
that was the first time that uh, we'd really been down in a game and we had to you know pull together and come from behind we knew you know we knew we were still in the game we had a really good chance to win but uh, I think that was a, was a big thing as a team concept where we really came together and played football together in the second half the second half saw a resurgence in the Rutgers team pride Joe Gagliardi scrambled his way into field position setting up the go-ahead score it was a rollout to the left and there wasn't anybody open and um, Joe was running out of time. My job is just to scrape along with the quarterback in case he just has to dump it off. But there was, there was people to my left which um, were in the way. So I just dropped back. I didn't feel anybody behind me. I just kept on going back. And Joe saw me and just dumped it out. Now it would be up to the defense to make the lead stick. Playing like a team possessed, they smothered the orange at every turn. So effective was their punishment that the Syracuse offense would cross the 50-yard line but once in the second half, only to have the ball taken away on the very next play. After the game, the Syracuse head coach called the defensive line of Harry Swain, Paul Halata, George Bankos, and Scott Miller by far the best pass rush we've played against this year. This disciplined gang of headhunters is number 41, Tyrone Stowe. He owns every Rutgers tackle record, both season and career. This year, he has been recognized as one of the country's hardest hitters by being invited to play in both the 1986 Blue Gray Classic and the 1987 Hula Bowl. Such a defense owes its allegiance to one thing and one thing only, hard work. And hard work starts on the practice field. In order to win football games, you must prepare well. And in order to prepare well, you certainly must practice well. Each and every time that they go out to the practice field, they must be trying to get better. Better individually and better collectively as a football team. Head coach Dick Anderson has brought to Rutgers a winning attitude. He is a man who brings a personal touch to the program, demanding the best, teaching the basics, and at the same time, he is able to learn from both his players and his staff. Sharp and quick. Barney, Barney, get it. Get, it. Uh, get a little bit more thrust off that lead foot, all right? Straight up and run, accelerate, accelerate, accelerate! All right, there you go. Strength and conditioning coach Dr. Paul Kennedy takes the player's hard work attitude and puts it to work in the weight room. Stressing injury prevention, his innovative program doesn't build weightlifters, it trains football players. Our athletes like being trained like athletes, and they like the fact that, that nothing that they do in here is going to compromise their ability to play on the field. I, I don't run to a coach and say, well, he can't bench press 400 this week, so take him out of the lineup. You know, that's not, that's not the purpose of our program. So they realize that we're here to serve them and to help them, and we take uh, a lot, an awful lot of pride in making sure that these guys are completely trained. My uh, flexibility has increased, and my, my strength has almost doubled. You know, since I, I've came in as a freshman, I've, I've taken a lot of, you know, the baby fat that I came in with and, you know, really turned it into to muscle mass. The Rutgers offensive line has made muscle mass a prerequisite for entrance. Lee Getz, selected to play in the 1986 East-West Shrine game, anchors the line of Doug Strickland, 
Mike Dillon, and Steve Tardy. At the offensive line position, you feel that, you know, that's where the games are won and lost in the trenches. So when we win, you know, we feel that, that we're a direct contribution to that win. And, you know, and I think that I can speak for the other offensive linemen that, uh, you know, winning is the most important thing for us as a team. You know, we, we don't mind not getting so much press, you know, just as long as we win. That commitment to winning is matched by the university's commitment to provide the best facilities for their student athletes. Facilities certainly play an important role in making a program successful. Uh, the state of New Jersey, uh, Rutgers University, has made a very strong commitment to our football program. Uh, we can see the tangible evidence of that in our uh, new bubble, uh, which is our indoor facility, which is the largest all-air structure in the country. Uh, we can see it in evidence of our AstroTurf fields that we uh, have put in, uh, our new $7 million training center that will be completed in March. Uh, we play uh, at Giant Stadium, which is one of the, the greatest athletic facilities anywhere in the world. Um, and soon we are going to expand our current stadium on our, on our uh, campus. So uh, we truly have, we think, some of the finest facilities in the country. In what is turning into a fierce Eastern rivalry, the Rutgers Army game posed several difficult questions for head coach Dick Anderson. Army presented a special problem because they run the wishbone. And uh, we had to spend an awful lot of uh, hours, uh, both on and off the field, trying to get ready for that wishbone. We knew that our defense not only had to play well, but they had to be able to be in a position where they could uh, force a turnover or two force. And uh, we thought that was going to be important. The defensive question would be answered quickly. The bone was broken. The Scarlet defense attacked the ball, forced turnovers, and took no prisoners. They succeeded in holding the Army rushing attack to only 45 yards in the first half. Offensively, the question of ball control was left in the hands of sophomore Scott Ernie. Starting in only his second game after Joe Gagliardi's career-ending injury, Ernie was charged with leading the Rutgers offense against the spirited cadet corps. The final battle statistics show Ernie completed 11 of 17 passes for two touchdowns. Second in command, Matt Prescott ate up 119 yards of enemy territory. And Curtis Stevens added 71 yards and two touchdowns of his own. Backing up over 520 yards of total offense, Ernie and his squad kept the ball for more than 40 minutes of the game. In the Battle of the Meadowlands, Scott Ernie and the Rutgers offense proved to be the top gun. of our program 
is to try to get across to our young people that there are a lot, a lot of things to be gotten out of a football program besides just learning how to play the game in a technique or an X and O sense. Um, we feel very strongly that the lessons that we learn uh, in a team situation carry over uh, to help uh, a young man later on when he graduates and he gets into the job market and he uh, gets into some of, the, some of the very difficult dealings that you come across in life. Um, the team concept, working with one another, getting along with one another, relying on one another, trusting one another. And we truly feel that uh, our program will enable a, a youngster to better cope with the outside world once he graduates. Some of the greatest attributes of leadership, discipline, and motivation are taught and learned on the football field. At Rutgers University, the goal is not to settle for second best, but to reach for the very top.